What's up, ViewConf? Let me get a holla. All right, all right, all right. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, I'm giving the first lightning talk of the day. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm a front-end developer at Tuft & Needle. Uh, my lightning talk today is called Accessibility for Everyone or Accessibility 101. So let's get started here. Did you know, were you aware that there are 20% of the people out there in the world have some type of disability? 20% is a small number, right? When you compare it to 80%, eh, it's just a little number. But 7 billion people around the world, give or take, okay? 1.4 billion of them have some type of disability. So when you compare that, 20%, that's a small number, but when you turn that into a whole number, it's a lot, lot bigger number. So this is the greater, you know, the greater web, the greater population that we're trying to contribute to. It's from the W3, I kind of like this a little bit. Uh, web accessibility means that people with disabilities can use the web. But I have a problem with this. Because this is an open web, and this is an inclusive web. And that means this is a web for all. So I like this a little bit better. Web accessibility means that everyone can use the web. Everybody should be able to have an amazing, accessible user experience, regardless of disability. And I hope you also feel the same way too. So in the world of accessibility, in the, uh, the space, we try and target five different types of impairments. I don't really like calling them disabilities. I like to call them impairments. Uh, one of them being hearing. In hearing, we have uh, sensory neural hearing loss. We have conductive hearing loss. And we have a mix of the two. We have vision disabilities. Color vision deficiency or color blindness. Field of vision. Things like that. We also have cognitive disabilities that we're trying to account for. Math comprehension, reading comprehension, mobility disabilities, cerebral palsy, arthritis, MS. These type of mobility impairments and disabilities are what we're trying to, trying to target as well. And then we also have temporary. Now temporary is like a broken hand, a broken finger, but what about that single parent, that parent with a newborn child, right? How many have been in a situation like that where you've had to work? And if you could raise your hand, raise it. If not, give me a whistle. We've all, thank you, we've all been in, we may have been in situations like that where you have to use your machine, but you can't put your child down, right? Your child will get older. You'll be able to set your child down the ramp, ramp it on your, your house, tear shit up. That's the way it goes. But these are our impairments at the time, right? So these are the five main things we think about. Some easy, or not easy wins, I like to call them intro wins. I don't like the term easy. Uh, I tweeted about these words the other day. Easy is not a good word in my vocabulary. Intro wins, semantic markup. Semantic markup by default is accessible, right? If you're building with semantic markup in mind, you're already starting off on a good foot. And if you have to retrofit accessibility in, look at your structure. Look at the structure of your markup. If you can start removing all the divs and start putting in semantic markup, header, main, footer, aside, section, article, you're already taking that one foot step forward in order to make an accessible user experience for everybody. Alt attributes. In my opinion, the alt attribute is the most important piece of that element. It works regardless if you have the image or not. The information you want to convey is in that alt text, right? You don't want to leave it blank. That's one of the most common things that's looked over, is missing an alt attribute. You will get dinged in an accessibility audit every day of the week. It doesn't matter. And you want to keep it short and descriptive. Short descriptive text. Let's say you have a picture of your dog, right? And your alt text says dog. Well, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. They just know that's a dog. So be descriptive. Be short and descriptive. Don't write a sentence. Don't write a paragraph. But make sure you have something there so when your image breaks, it doesn't load, or there is no image at all, your user can still understand what's going on with that experience. Another one I like to talk about is ARIA labels. For non-contextual elements, you see this a lot with X's in the top of a modal, right? If you don't have an ARIA label of close and an ARIA label of exit, a screen reader cannot announce that to your user and they can keep going around in circles in that modal and never be able to shift focus back to that window. You also see this with social media icons. Social media icons is just an icon font. But if you don't give an ARIA label of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the second a screen reader attempts and goes to that and the focus shifts, 
they, the user no longer knows what that is. It'll just announce icon, whatever that may, case may be. So always use ARIA labels if you have to for non-contextual elements. That's another intro win. Uh, colors matter. Like this is a thing, colors matter. Don't just use colors that you think are cool, we've all done it, or maybe your design team thinks the colors are sweet, they don't, you know, they don't work though sometimes. This is a problem, especially communication through color. Check the contrast of your colors, foreground and background, flip them, flip them back, see what works, what doesn't work, and try to come to a mutual agreement, open up collaboration and creativity with your design and marketing team, because colors matter. Screen readers, these are some more tools that we, we should be testing through. Mac. All, all OS devices, iOS devices, they come with voiceover automatically, so you can test on that. You have NVDA for Windows, which is free. Uh, you can also test with JAWS Windows, but that's like really expensive, and if you don't feel like spending tons and tons of money, or you don't work for an institution that requires JAWS Windows for your screen reader, don't worry about it. You can get by just fine with NVDA and Microsoft VoiceOver. Or um, Mac VoiceOver, I'm sorry. So yeah, always use screen readers, and close your monitor when you're testing on a screen reader. Don't read it and listen to it, that doesn't work that way. X, X Core is an amazing tool. You can use it in the browser extensions. Chrome, Firefox, you can run it in the end-to-end -end testing suites using Mocha, Jasmine, whatever the case may be. Uh, this will give you an audit on your experience, tell you how to fix it, where the issues lie. It'll give you 20 to 50% of all your issues because how do you get all of them? You manually test. Take your mouse away, use a keyboard, use a screen reader, but X is a great, great tool that you should have in your tool belt. Also Lighthouse and web.dev. This is like, Light, Lighthouse is an amazing tool as well. It's in the dev tools in Chrome. It runs X Core under the hood. Web.dev is like Lighthouse in the browser. So if you have like a marketing team or a stakeholder that wants to check some, some specs and some audits, they can go to web.dev, run the URL in there, and then get some information. WebAIM also has an audit tool. You can run your audit through that as well if you so choose. Some stuff for, for Vue, you can have different plugins for linting, uh, checking your accessibility within your, your um, code editor. And so some takeaways I want everybody to, to kind of walk away with today. Consider the, all the impairments, right? All five, think about that. Uh, intro wins, semantic markup, alt, alt attributes on your images, ARIA labels when you need them. Test in screen readers and remember other assistive devices like sip and puff machines, braille machines, right? Run audits on your code using Lighthouse. I like this quote, this is from me, accessibility is not a requirement, it is a must. It is your job as a worker on the web to care. That's me, that's my time, Salt and Burnham. Stay after the lightning talks, Maria's giving a great talk on accessibility. Everybody have fun, ViewConf, I'll see you later. <laughs>